Hello everyone, and welcome to the K Nearest Neighbors with Python lecture. In this lecture, we're going to show you how you can use Python and Scikit-Learn to implement the K Nearest Neighbors algorithm. And let's go ahead and get started. All right, went ahead and cleared the toolbar and the header to get a little more view. And I'm gonna go ahead and start by just importing pandas as pd, importing numpy as np, and then importing my visualization libraries. That's going to be matplotlib, dot pyplot as plt, import seaborn as sns, and then since I'm using the Jupyter Notebook, matplotlib inline. All right, we're going to pretend that we've been given a classified data set from a company. And actually, a lot of times, if you're beginning to interview for data science positions at certain companies, they will give you a data set as a take-home project, want you to analyze it or do some sort of machine learning algorithm on it, but they won't actually tell you specific values or what is represented by a column. And that's in order to protect their customer data or just to give you an anonymized data source. Let me go ahead and show you an example of what that might look like. We'll start by setting df is equal to pd read csv. And I'm going to go ahead and read in the classified data. And one other note is I'm going to set the index call equal to zero. And then let's go ahead and check the head of that data frame. All right, great. So you notice we have a bunch of data, but we just have a target class column, one or zero, and essentially just random letters for the column names. And this is essentially just anonymized classified data. So you don't know what any of these numbers represent, or you also don't know what these column names represent. You just know that you need to use these features that are unknown to you as far as what they actually represent in order to predict a target class, one or zero. Because the KNN classifier predicts the class of a given test observation by identifying the observations that are nearest to it, the scale of the variable actually matters a lot. And any variables that are on a large scale will have a much larger effect on the distance between observations. And because of this, when you're using K nearest neighbors as a classifier, what you're going to want to do is try to standardize everything to the same scale. Luckily, Scikit-Learn actually has a lot of built-in tools to help you through this process. We're going to go ahead and say from sklearn, preprocessing, import, standard scalar. And you can just use tab to help yourself autocomplete some of this. And standard scalar is going to look a lot as if it were just a normal model. You're going to go ahead and create an instance of standard scalar just like you would for a normal machine learning algorithm. And I'm gonna go ahead and call my instance Scalar. And then I'm gonna say Scalar, and I'm going to fit it to my data. And I just wanna fit it to my data, not the actual target class. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it, instead of just saying DF, I will say DF drop target class along axis is equal to one. So that's basically all the feature columns that I'm going to fit this scalar object to. All right, and then what I can do is use the scalar object to do a transformation. So what you end up doing is you say scaled underscore features or whatever value you want here, variable name I should say, take that scalar object and call the transform method on it. And what the transform method does, it just performs the standardization by centering and scaling. So you already have the object fitted, created, and what we're gonna do is use transform to actually transform that data. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in that data one more time, those features. Target class, and then, whoops, axis is equal to one. All right, let's go ahead and run that. And now if we go ahead and check out the scaled features, notice we have an array of values. And this is the scaled version of these actual values. Now, if you'll notice, these actual values are quite close to each other, but a lot of times they won't be. So you'll, it's always a good idea to do some sort of standard scaling transformation on this. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is use that scaled features variable to recreate a feature data frame. So I'll say df underscore feet is equal to pd data frame. Pass in my scaled features as the data. 
And then for the column names, I'm just going to specify that columns is equal to df.columns. And remember, df.columns is a way we can grab a list of all the column names. And this is referencing that original. So here I have all the column names. However, remember this is actually just the features. So I want everything but the last one. And you can actually do that just by doing slice notation. So this is everything but the last one. We'll go ahead and add that in here. Everything but the last one. Run that and then check out the uh, feet just ahead of it. Great, and now we have a standard scale or standardized version of our data. And now our data is ready to be put into a machine learning algorithm such as k-nearest neighbors, which really depends on the distance between each feature. Okay, let's go ahead and move along to the train test split now that our data is ready. We'll say from sklearn dot cross validation import train test split. And hopefully by now you're actually really used to this sort of thing. So as you know, what I like to do, do shift tab on train test split so I can scroll down, find the example, and this will save me a little bit of typing since I can just copy and paste this. Paste that over and have everything here ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and set my test size equal to 0.3 and random state equal to 101. You can set your random state equal to 101 as well if you want your results to match exactly like mine. Now what we need to do is set our X and Y. So our X, we can actually just pass this in either the DF underscore feet or just scaled features. It's up to you. So you could just pass in the array of values or you could also pass in DF underscore feet. And then for Y, this is going to be the target class column. So we can go ahead and say y is target class and then run this. And now we have our train test split. Now it's time to use k-nearest neighbors. And remember that we are trying to come up with a model to predict whether someone will be inside that target class or not. What we're going to go ahead and do is start with k is equal to 1 and then see how we can use the elbow method to choose a k value. To start off, I'm going to go ahead and say from sklearn neighbors import k neighbors and in this case if I go ahead and do tab to autocomplete I'm doing a classification so I want k, k neighbors classifier so again from sklearn dot neighbors that's the family that this is in import and then the model we want is k neighbors classifier then I'm going to go ahead and say k and n is equal to k neighbors classifier and if we do shift tab here, we can see the various parameters. What we're going to want to do is specify the n underscore neighbors parameter. That's the number of neighbors you want for this model. We'll go ahead and state that the number of neighbors, just to start off with, is equal to 1. So this is k equals 1. And then we go ahead and say knn fit. And then pass in our training data. So x train, y train. And we went ahead and fit the data. Now let's go ahead and grab some predictions off of it so we can do some evaluation. I'm going to say pred is equal to knn.predict and then pass in my test data. So now if I look at this, I have predictions of what class these people belong to based off of these anonymized features. Let's go ahead and do a prediction and evaluation off our knn model. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to using the elbow method to choose a correct k value. I'm going to say from sklearn.metrics, I'll go ahead and import a classification report and a confusion matrix. I'm just using tab autocomplete there. Let's go ahead and print out the confusion matrix with y test and pred for our predictions. And let's also print out our classification report with y test and pred for our predictions. All right, taking a look at this, it looks like our model's actually pretty good already with k equals 1. But we're going to go ahead and explore if we can 
squeeze even more from our model by choosing an even better K value. Let me go ahead and show you how we can do that. What we want to do is use the elbow method to choose a correct K value. I'm going to go ahead and say my error rate is an empty list. And what I'm going to do is basically iterate many models using many different K values and plot out their error rate and see which one has the lowest error rate. Let me go ahead and break this down step by step. I have an empty list called error underscore rate and I'm going to go ahead and say for i in range let's go from 1 to 40 and you can choose smaller number instead of 40 if you don't want to do that many k values but we're basically going to check every possible k value from 1 to 40 and for all of those values I'm going to call k neighbors classifier with n underscore neighbors as i because remember I'm saying for i in range 1 through 40. So I create a model at that specific k value then I go ahead and fit that model to my training set so x train y train and then I'm going to go ahead let me scroll down a little more I'm going to go ahead and say pred underscore i is equal to knn dot predict off the test set and then finally I'm going to say my error rate dot append so I add a new, a new item to this list and I'm going to append the mean of pred underscore i not equal to y test and that's essentially the average error rate so that's the average of where my predictions were not equal to the actual test values take the numpy mean of that and then append that error rate to this list let's go ahead and run this and see what happens keep in mind this will take some time so I'm gonna go ahead and just run this okay looks like it's done now I went ahead and jumped and I'm going to plot this out so I'm going to say plt dot figure let me go ahead and set fig size to be a little larger than usual so we'll say 10 by 6 that way we can see it and what I want to do now is if we go ahead and just take a look at what our error rate looks like it's a bunch of values here now this isn't super readable to me and that's because I want to plot this out instead of just reading those numbers so we'll say plt dot figure fig size and then we'll continue on by saying plt plot I'm gonna plot range 1 through 40 versus my error rate and I'm gonna add a couple more arguments here I'm gonna say the color is blue this is just for visibility then I'm going to have my line style be equal to a dashed line. And we've also seen before how we can just type in like a dash dash if you wanted to. But you can also just type in a string dash depending on what you prefer. I'm going to set a marker this to be O. And then I'm going to say marker face color is red and marker size is 10 and then we'll say PLT title is error rate versus K value and let's go ahead and put some X labels there X label is K whoops PLT X label and PLT Y label is the error rate okay let's go ahead and run this check it out and then we'll break it all down okay looking at this error rate it looks like we start with a higher error rate as we go with a lower k value and eventually going up and down we start to lower our error rate and it looks like we kind of start to reach some sort of minimum maybe around 20s mark now the difference here between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 as an error rate is quite small it also looks like you can continue and maybe drop around where k equals 35 maybe 34 a smaller error rate so let's go ahead and pick a lower k value or excuse me a higher k value for a lower error rate we started off with k equals 1 and that was around a 0 0.075 error rate now let's go ahead and maybe we'll go ahead and just come around this 
let's go ahead and say 17 here. Now we could keep going around here, but that's quite a high K value. And you'll see that it kind of bounces up and down. So I kind of don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and choose maybe around 17. Now, maybe for other data sources, this will probably be a little smoother and not as bumpy. And the reason this is a little bumpier is because your error rate is already so low. I mean, 0 0.05 and 0 0.08 are actually already a good error rate. So this range is already pretty good, even if you just chose k equals 1. Let me go ahead and copy and paste some of the code we've already done, such as printing this confusion matrix. I'm also going to print a new line between them. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is choose one of those higher k values so we can compare. I'm going to say k and n is equal to k neighbors classifier, number of neighbors. Let me go ahead and just choose, let's say, 17. And you can play around with this and maybe choose like 34, whatever you prefer. And then I'm going to say k and n dot fit x train y train and then pred is going to be knn.predict k underscore test and then we're going to go ahead and run this and see how this compares to our original confusion matrix and classification report so our classification report looks like we're showing around 92 percent that's not so bad it's actually pretty good let's go ahead and see if we can squeeze a little bit more performance out of this model by raising the k value to something that may be a little more optimal. Okay, running that, we were able to classify a couple more points correctly. So it looks like now we're at 95%, which is great. We're able to squeeze a little more accuracy and precision and recall from our model by doing this elbow method. Now this comes at the cost and the fact that you have to run all these models, plot them all out, and actually spend the time to figure out what your optimal k value is. But it does give you that extra 3%. And that's basically it for the K nearest neighbors algorithm and how you can use scikit-learn to implement it. Let me go ahead and just do a quick rundown of everything we just did as a review before you head off to your project. First thing we did was do our imports. We went ahead and read our classified data. Then, as an important step, we had to standardize our data to the same scale. So we said from sklearn.preprocessing import standard scalar, we created a scalar object, a standard scalar object, did a fit, to the features, and then we used scalar.transform on those features to create the scaled features. And we went ahead and put this into a data frame so we could actually see what the scaled features looked like. Then we went ahead and did a train test split on those scaled features, so df underscore feet or the scaled underscore features. And then we set the target class to our y, did the train test split, and then finally we set from sklearn.neighbors, import k neighbors classifier. We started off with a low k value, just equal to 1, went ahead and ran our model and checked out the confusion matrix and the classification report for that model. Then we went ahead and did the elbow method to plot out a variety of k values, checked out the plot, went ahead and chose a good k value, round 17, you could have gone upwards to 34, maybe 36, played around with those, and I encourage you to go ahead and take your time to play around with extra k values, and then we went ahead and compared our new k value to our old one, and it looks like we were able to squeeze a little higher accuracy by choosing a better k value. All right, hope you enjoyed that lecture. Thanks everyone.